In this video, we work through an example on shock wave formation and dissipation. In this case, we're looking at a rolling roadblock. There are different examples of rolling roadblocks. This example uses a police car, but it could be a funeral procession, or farm equipment moving slowly on a road, a bicyclist taking a lane where passing is not possible, or a scientific experiment. A Berkeley professor once had two students drive at the speed limit in parallel across a long bridge so that he could observe the consequences in reality. This is an example. Flow on a road is Q sub 1 of 1,800 vehicles per hour per lane, and the density is 14.4 vehicles per kilometer per lane. To reduce speeding on a section of highway, a police cruiser decides to implement what's called a rolling roadblock and travels in the left lane at the speed limit, 88 kilometers per hour, or 10 kilometers. Because there is a police car driving the speed limit, nobody wants to pass the police car because, by definition, they would be speeding and the police car could pull them over. After the police cruiser jo joins, the platoon density increases to 20 vehicles per kilometer per lane, and the flow drops. How many vehicles per lane will be in the platoon when the police car leaves the highway? Pause the video and solve the problem. Okay, the first step, solve for the unknowns. You were given Q sub 1 and K sub 1 in this example. Solve for V sub 1. Q sub 1 is 1,800 vehicles per hour. K sub 1 is 14.4 vehicles per kilometer. V sub 1 is 125 kilometers per hour. Solve for the flow after the police cruiser joins. Q sub 2 is the unknown. V sub 2 is 88 kilometers per hour. K sub 2 is 20 vehicles per kilometer. That gives us 1,760 vehicles per hour. What's the wave velocity? V sub w is delta Q over delta K. So delta Q is a 40 vehicle per hour drop. Delta K is a 5.6 increase in vehicles per kilometer, so negative 40 over 5.6 is negative 7.14 kilometers per hour, so the wave is moving backwards. Determine the rate of growth of the platoon, which is the relative speed. The relative speed is the difference between the downstream speed and the wave velocity, which was 88 kilometers an hour minus negative 7.14. Negative, because the wave velocity is in the opposite direction, which gives you 95.1 kilometers per hour, which is the growth rate of the platoon. Platoon is a transportation term adopted from the military. Cars in the platoon are not necessarily stopped. Instead, the cars are following each other and can't drive at the speed they want to. They are constrained by the vehicle in front of them. We talked about platoons in traffic. We might also have platoons at a series of traffic signals. In a signalized corridor, we have a traffic light followed by a traffic light on the next block, followed by a traffic light on the next block. We want platooning because we want all of the cars to arrive at the traffic lights when they're green. In the case of traffic signal control, platooning is a good thing because it allows us to synchronize the lights and attain efficiencies. Determine the time spent by the police cruiser on the highway. Well, if he's driving for 10 kilometers at 88 kilometers an hour, he's there for 0 0.11 hours or 6.8 minutes. The wave is growing at 95.1 kilometers per hour times 0.11 hours, then it's 10.46 kilometers long. So there's 10.46 kilometers of vehicles that are constrained because of this police cruiser starting a rolling roadblock. What is the rate at which the queue grows in units of vehicles per hour? This is the question we're solving for N1 or N2. First, we're going to solve for the rate at which the queue grows, which is Q1, Q sub 1 minus K sub 1 times V sub W. Then we'll solve for the n, which has to equal q sub two, n sub 2, which has to equal q sub 2 minus k sub 2 times v sub w, because the rate at which the q is growing is the same, both in the upstream of the boundary and on the downstream side of the boundary. k sub 1 times v sub 1 is 14.4 times negative 7.14, which equals 10 point, which equals 102. So 1800 minus negative 102 is 1,902 vehicles per hour. We can calculate the number of vehicles in the platoon as the length of the platoon times the density. So if we know that the platoon was 10.46 kilometers long, and the density in the platoon was 20 vehicles per kilometer, 10.46 times 20 is 209.2. Not co coincidentally, this equals 1,902 times 0 0.11 hours. Shock waves don't go on forever, necessarily. When the police car leaves, what happens to the shock wave? If we just reverse everything, then the wave of dissipation never catches the wave of formation of the shock wave, and it doesn't dissipate. That's one possibility.
Another possibility is that the speed returns to 125 kilometers per hour, but the density stays the same, so everyone just speeds up, but they don't spread out. In that case, the shock wave dissipates very quickly, instantaneously, because everyone is just going faster, they're not spreading out at all. What happens in practice is they go faster, but they also spread out some, so it's somewhere in between those two cases. For instance, if we keep the density at halfway between 14.4 vehicles per kilometer and 20 vehicles per kilometer, then we have a dissipation wave of 139 kilometers per hour, which quickly but not instantaneously catches the first shock wave formation. Then, when the dissipation wave catches the formation wave, the people behind that never knew anything happened. So at some point, the wave at which the shock wave is dissipating essentially overtakes the wave which was forming, and then it vanishes. The math for that is what we're looking at the density halfway between the two and seeing what the speed of that would be. We could calculate how long it would take. It might take 21 seconds. Not a big deal. Or we could drop the upstream Q and K, so another possibility for the shock wave is to dissipate not because because not as many vehicles are arriving. So sustained demand over capacity is unfeasible. It can't be over capacity forever or the queue would grow on forever. It can do that for a finite period of time, but usually well less than a day and usually well less than half a day. So at some point the queue upstream will drop and at that point the second wave will eventually catch the first wave because the formation wave slows down if the upstream flow is slower. If the upstream flow falls below the downstream capacity, then the wave dissipates. We have essentially a forward-moving wave.